Hospitals may respond to therapy, or... She could recover without a trace. Or the patient may experience permanent muscle paralysis. Do you have a ticket for that seat? Hire Dick Tracy and find out, why don't you? That won't be necessary. I'll simply call the usher. Oh, come on, Gramps. Would it kill you to let me sit here? If I were 20 years younger and not married, I'd sure you the town. Well, if you were 20 years younger, you wouldn't be this charming, and I'd turn you down. <laughs> a harmless turn on the dance floor. Nothing we're doing tonight is harmless. There's salad in the refrigerator, and the pork roast will be done in half an hour. Half an hour. Don't forget about it. I set the timer. <laughs> and be careful when you take it out. Would you leave some pot holders out where he can find them? I think I can take a roast out of the oven without hurting myself. <laughs> you need to be in by 7 tomorrow. Oh, that's not necessary, Ruth. When was the last time you brewed a pot of coffee? Oh, my word, we'd better get a move on. Now, there's still plenty of time to make that train. I'll get the car. Mr. Sloan's charcoal gray and pinstripe need to go to the cleaners. And there should be time to mend that tablecloth before I get back. When I'm gone, some people can get lackadaisical. I'll keep their noses to the grindstone. Give my condolences to Aunt Lorraine. Mm. Tell her Uncle Oscar was always one of my favorite in-laws. I will. Now, if you get lonely, give me a call. I'll be home before dinner tomorrow night. Are you sure you'll be all right? I'll survive. Good night, Mr. Sloan. Gloria, you and Abe take the day off tomorrow. But, Mr. I'll take full responsibility. Everyone needs a day off now and again. Heaven knows you deserve one. Thank you, Mr. Sloan. Roadhouse. Miss Lowen, as luck would have it, I am completely on my own this evening with only a pork roast for company. And a pork roast isn't much of a conversationalist. Would you join me for dinner? You got to act sin. She weight the positive, eliminate the negative and latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. To illustrate my last remark. Don't in the way, no way in the yard. What did they do just when everything looked so dark? You ain't the positive healing. Might ain't the negative and last on to be affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In-Between. No, don't mess with Mr. In-Between. The truth is, Gina, I never cared about money, because I could always afford food and rent and have a few bits left over for beer. But since you agreed to marry me, I've been thinking, how can I provide more for you and little Emma and any other little Haley's that might come along in the future? You're already a good provider, Charlie. Maybe so, maybe no, but I just got better. Mike Sloan was right when he said a man's got to earn his own fortune. You have fortune here? I make fortune here with full of brushes. Brushes? I'll sell these door to door every minute that I'm not at the factory. There are 4,000 full of brushmen serving 10 million homes. Now, if I can sell to 1,200 customers in one year, which is 100 a month, which is an average of three a day, I can make between $1,500 and $2,000. That is wonderful. Now, I'm going to practice on you, okay? Now, you be a tough customer, okay? Okay, fine. Good evening, ma'am. I'm with the Fuller Brush Company, and I'd like to take a minute of your time to show you these fine products. Okay, fine. No, Gina, be tough as nails. Say I'm busy. I am busy. And shut the door. How can you practice? Shut the door. See? 
If you're too busy running around all day doing housework, I would like to show you how I can lighten your load with these fine products. Okay, fine. Gina. I want no hairbrushes today. Go away. That away, Gina. Hairbrushes is only one of the many fine products that Fuller makes. We also have toothbrushes, bath brushes, clothes brushes, not to mention a full range of household polishes and cleaners. As long as there's dirt, there's a need for fuller brushes. I have no dirt. I want no brushes. Lady, I say you'll spend less time on your knees and more time enjoying your beautiful home because there is no home that cannot be made cleaner with fuller products. Now, let me give you a free demonstration, not to mention a free gift. Now say, okay, fine. No. I want no brushes. No, Gina, it's okay. I won you over. No. No brushes today. Gina, very good. Gina, we're through. Gina. Gina. Oh, that'd be good. Yes, thanks. Not too much. I'll go. May I get you another? Um, uh, not yet, thank you. On second thought, uh, waiter, um... <laughs> Mr. Sloan, I thought it was you, sir. Sam, where's Mrs. Sloan? Uh, she had to go, uh, out of town to see her Aunt Lurleen, I forgot. Uh, Lorraine. Who lives in Prospect, as I recall. Prospect, yes. So you're a free man tonight. That's right. Not that I mean any disrespect to Mrs. Sloan, who's a wonderful woman, and I wouldn't want you or her to misconstrue... I understand exactly what you mean, Sam. No disrespect taken. I know why you came here, sir. You do? The pork roast. My wife says they serve the best pork roast in northern Ohio. Does she? She does indeed, sir. She does indeed. And she'd be the one to know. She fancies herself something of a pork roast expert, sir. Are you meeting someone? Um, uh, no, just having a drink. Would you like to sit at the bar? No, a table, please. This is quite a coincidence, then. In what way is it a coincidence? My missus took the train to Muncie this morning to see her sister, so I'm free to have dinner with her. Would you like to see a menu? No. Yes. <laughs> Why not? Shall we? Waiter, I'd like a cup of coffee. Be sure to leave room for dessert. They make first-rate apple pie. If your mom never walks again, You'll have to build a new room down here. She'll walk again. Well, Doc says maybe not. A lot of polio victims recover completely. Not all of them. Well, Mom will. Everybody ready? Bring her in. Wait. Here I come, ready or not. Ta-da. Oh, heavens. Well, we solved the problem of getting you up and down the stairs. We eliminated it. Lipstick powder, mirror, night cream, comb. And brush. Compliments of your fuller brush man. A notebook, pen, a uh, uh, prayer book, and... Daily missile. Also, <clears throat> Charlie. Oh, right. You can open and close this without even having to get up. Presto, change it. Reminds you Robinson Crusoe's Island, doesn't it? More like a luxury hotel, if you ask me. One of you ring this, one of us bellhops will come running. And everyone promises on their honor not to use this bathroom. Doesn't everybody? It's your private bathroom. Al and I will watch the baby upstairs at night. Yeah, and uh, during the day, we'll bring his bassinet down here. And Mrs. Seneff said she wants to come over Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. And also, uh, Claire Troa volunteered. Why? To help with the baby to do whatever you need done. Well, tell them they don't need to. I mean, not on my account anyway. I, I don't want to be a burden. You're not. Let me get this. I'm going to go get my sewing basket. Oh, I'll get it. I'll, I'll get it.
You know, hurry, we're going to miss the movies. Oh, these numbers don't add up. We can do bookkeeping tomorrow. Oh, I don't want to be spending my first day off, and I don't know how long at this table doing arithmetic. Four months. What? Between working at the Sloan's and trying to get our restaurant on its feet. It's been four months since we've had a single day to ourselves. We can go to the matinee tomorrow. Woman, I need to relax. We are missing $32 from our month in total, and there is no way on God's green earth that I'm going to be able to relax until I find that money. Then we're going to have to find the mistake tonight because we are not working tomorrow. Oh, another funny thing, Mike, uh, uh, Mr. Sloan. Whenever she goes out of town, my wife cooks enough meatloaf to feed a family of ten for a week. She's afraid I won't be able to manage while she's away. <laughs> You'd think she'd never heard of restaurants. <laughs> the truth of it is, I enjoy being on my own every once in a while. I get to do the things I can never do when she's around. How about that apple pie? Cigar? Hello? I knew you'd worry, so I called to let you know I'm safe and sound. I'm glad to hear it. The train was pleasant, I hope. Very comfortable. How was the pork roast? I wasn't in the mood. I went out to a restaurant instead. By yourself? I had dinner with Sam. I know you hate to eat alone, but Sam? We ran into each other, and I could hardly refuse. What did you have? A pork ro uh, chopped, a chopped, a lamb chop. How's Laureen? She's far more devastated by Oscar's death than I imagined. Would you mind terribly if I stayed an extra day? Not at all. Are you sure? Well, heavens, Ruth, Laureen is a grieving widow. If she's asked you to stay, how could you not? She hasn't asked me outright. She's too proud to ask anyone for help, but she certainly needs it. Stay the weekend if you'd like. That's considerate of you. Charlie, She's here. usually awake by now. Don't let me. Charlie. Mom, are you awake? Mom? You awake yet? Breakfast. Close that curtain this instant, young lady. If I can't have my privacy, I'm not going to stay here. I'm sorry, Mother. I need to speak to Al right away. I'll go get him. Do you want some breakfast? No, I need to speak to Al. Well, he's coming. Would someone turn on the radio, please? What's the matter? I wet the bed. Oh, shh. No big deal. Shh. I don't want them to know. I couldn't get onto the chair for the longest time, and then I could, from the chair, get onto the toilet seat. Why didn't you ring the bell? I don't want to be a burden. Dear Pauline, I have met a true gentleman and a good friend. The only problem is he's married. He has very kindly asked me to go dancing. I said no, but I'm reconsidering because I say life is short and what's the harm in going dancing? What do you say? Signed, Crazy in Love. Dear Crazy in Love, true gentleman, I say if you don't drop that two-timer like a hot potato, you'll be crazy, period. Married means hands off which goes for ladies and gents. Trust me on this. Not open till 11.30. Judy?
Good morning. Good morning. That was my plant manager last night. As luck would have it, his wife was out of town. Ah. Oh. I hope you weren't offended. If I'd have been offended, I'd have come over and introduced myself. As it was, I didn't relish the thought of explaining our friendship to him any more than you did. It's not our fault if the benighted of the world don't understand certain things. And it's not our obligation to explain things to them. And I still owe you a steak, so how about tonight? I don't think it's a good idea us going out. Is it such a good idea that we'd be deprived of each other's company simply because I'm married and you're not? I'm only calling it as I see it. I'm well aware of the implications of what we're doing. And I'm aware of what other people might think. But I'm no schoolboy. Give me credit for knowing when it's time to say goodbye. Until then, what's the harm in a good steak dinner? Attending bar, as long as I have, you give a lot of advice to a lot of customers. I always tell a gal in this situation she's playing with fire. I tell you play with fire, you might get burned. Of course, nobody ever listens to my advice, so I don't know why I should. <laughs> Mrs. Haley, I'm relying on you to answer the telephones for these offices during staff reorientation hour. I've asked the switchboard to patch all incoming calls up here. Gladly, Miss Watkins. Michael Sloan's office. Mr. Sloan, please. Well, he's not in right now. May I take a message? Would you tell him the tailor fitting his shirts has to cancel his 3 o'clock appointment? If Mr. Sloan will call back when he returns to the office, we'll arrange another appointment. The number is Blackburn 5620. I'll give him the message. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. That's a bad idea. What are you, my guardian angel? I'm not, but you need one. How you doing there? How much would a second phone cost? Uh, 50 cents a month. Oh, heavens, just put a longer cord on the phone we already have. Well, the phone company won't let us install cords over six feet. Why not? Well, long phone cords are a safety hazard. Oh, that's a transparent phone company tactic to sell more telephones. We don't sell them. We just rent them, lady. And I don't make company policy. I just follow it. I can put a second phone in the kitchen if you want it. We don't. Yes, we do. And Not at $6 a year, we don't. No charge to take the phone out if you change your mind. You, you might be alone for four or five hours at a stretch. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Gina is bringing Emma by so she can sew in the afternoons. Mrs. Seneff said she would stop by to check up on us. This house will seem like public square before oh, this is okay. over. All right. I just moved the phone we already have into the kitchen. Right. Just get... We can afford a second phone, but never mind. Look, why don't I get you a cup of coffee? I'll get it myself. No. All right, no harm done, no harm done. done. You're still at it. I'm four dollars and thirty-two cents off. Could you double check the butcher's bills with me? I'm not checking butcher's bills, and you're not checking butcher's bills. We're going out and have some fun. Yeah, when am I supposed to finish this? Tomorrow. Oh, and won't Ruth Sloan be happy to see me doing my bookkeeping instead of her laundry? Ruth Sloan won't be seeing you because Ruth Sloan is spending an extra day in Prospect and Mr. Sloan just called giving us tomorrow off and tomorrow we'll work on those butcher bills. Now put on your best dress. We're stepping out. Is this where you bring me on my first day off in four months? I don't want to support our competition. That's why we're here. To spend money on the competition? No, thank you. You've got to spend money to make money and in this case it's our only chance to see what the competition offers in the way of competition. Or do you want to just imagine what their copper tastes like for a nickel less than ours? Mr. Sloan, your wife called. She said, don't bother to call back. She's fine. She was just picking up her own messages. Um, Donald Nadolsky called and also your tailor. My tailor? Your tailor's assistant or, or secretary to cancel your three o'clock fitting. Well, I didn't. Oh. Would yes. You, would you like me to, to ring him up and, and reschedule? No, I'll uh, have Yvonne take care of it. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Haley. You're quite welcome, sir.
Pearl Roadhouse. Miss Owen, please. <laughs> Miss Owen, it is for you. What? Nothing. Hello? Sir. And this is Mike Sloan. I understand there's a problem with my three o'clock appointment. Mr. Berman, I'm glad you got my message. I need to postpone our appointment. I have to work later than I expected. Does this mean I should reschedule for another day? I'll be off at five if that's not too late. Five will be fine. I'll see you then. Goodbye. Good day. I hope I got it right this time. My dentist. My molar's giving me fits. Which molar? Five foot ten, one hundred seventy pound one? You want my advice? I don't. Say you're playing on fire, you could get burned. How about one quick rehearsal, Mrs. K, before I go out? Good luck. Oh, go ahead, Charlie. Good evening, ma'am. I'm with the Fuller Brush Company, and I'd like to take a minute of your time to show you these fine products. Please do. If you're running around all day busy doing housework, well, I mean busy, but not, I could show you how to lighten your load with these fine products. Good. And as long as there's dirt, there's a need for Fuller Brushes. And you'll spend less time on your knees and more time enjoying your beautiful... Well, never mind that part. Fuller Brush has everything today's active, on-the-go housewife needs. Oh, maybe this isn't a good idea, Miss Kay. Uh, I need a mop head replacement and a bottle of furniture polish and, and one of their nice long combs. This one? Yes. How much would that be? No charge for you, Miss Kay. Oh, you have to, Charlie. Otherwise, you'll never make any money. I'm not going to take your dough, Miss Kay. I'm not going to take your profits, Charlie. I'll sell it to you at cost, or I'll tie it up in a ribbon and give it to you for your birthday. And then it'll be rude for you to refuse. At cost. Thank you. I'll put your profits in the poor box. Yipes. This sales business isn't so easy as people think. Good luck. Thanks, Miss Kay. They use lard instead of butter. That's how they do it for less. Coffee is watered down, I'd say. Leaves an aftertaste. Wash it down with some of this dish water. <laughs> Last week, all very one of our customers recommend the chuck wagon the coffee there. It's just on block. How can anyone sell hot apple pie for a measly dime? For the life of me, I can't figure it. Looks good, thank you. <laughs> There's your answer right there. They serve puny little pieces. Mm. They put in too much cinnamon. I've been hearing people talk about the Hoover House. What could they have that we don't have? How can anyone afford flatware like this? By what we're charging the customer, plain and simple. How much money did you bring? It's an investment, Gloria. I'm not complaining. I just want to see if we have enough left to try the dew drop in. Uh, we have, and we will. Also, the pancake house on Euclid. Now, you order the blueberry muffin and uh, vanilla pudding, and I'll get the coconut cream pie and the custard. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Oh, I dare say you'll much prefer their porterhouse. I don't expect we'll run into anyone there, but... Uh, if we do, we should be prepared. Please don't call me your niece. Would you mind being an old friend of the family in town for the evening? We used to live here. My father was transferred to a plant in Cincinnati. Now he's considering moving back. And he and mother sent me here to look at homes in the area. After I spent a frustrating day with the real estate agent, you took pity on me and bought me dinner. Ruth would have cooked supper, but she's out of town, and your housekeeper had the night off. <laughs> Mrs. Haley, it's past seven. 
Is it? Oh, I lost track of time. Well, be sure you turn out the lights when you leave. I will, Miss Watkins. Good night. Good night. Uh, you understand, Mrs. Haley, that any overtime pay must be pre-approved, and we currently have none in our budget. I'm not expecting overtime, Miss Watkins. I'm, I'm merely trying to get a leg up on things around the office. Oh, wow. I wish everyone had your sense of initiative and perseverance. <laughs> This drive has given me an appetite. I'm sorry it took so long. Well, better safe than sorry. Here we are. Pentagos. Well, you missed the parking lot. That was uh, Abe and Gloria Davis going in. The employees of ours. <laughs> Good night, nurse. What are the odds of them coming here this very night? All the luck. Seems as though our dinner plans are changed. Doomed from the start. We'll pick up some hamburgers on the way back. Unless you think you can find a butcher shop open at this hour. What for? Well, we could pick up a couple of T-bones and I'll cook them at my apartment. Would you be comfortable doing that? More comfortable doing that than hiding. I guarantee we can finish a steak without anybody recognizing either of us. If you've got a minute, I'd like to show you the fine line of products made by the Fuller Brush Company. Maybe another time. I've got a two loads of laundry to iron. Oh, you wouldn't be giving me the brush off now, would you? Brush off. Oh. Get it? <laughs> we have toothbrushes, manicure brushes, cleaning brushes, not to mention the finest polishes made in America. I wish you had been here before I went to the store and bought these. Good evening. Well, bad evening then. I wasn't expecting company. Don't apologize. It's charming. That's all I can afford is what it is. I'll, uh, get you a beer before I light the broiler. Thank you. I should have asked. Do you mind? Not a bit. Thank you. That's Tom. Your husband. Yep. You two would have gotten along swell. He loved baseball. Did he get you interested in the game? No. <laughs> Actually, I met him at a game. You could say I've met all my favorite men at ball games. Thank you. How old was he? 26 when he was killed. He worked his parents' farm in Missouri. They were going to deed him half the acreage when he got back. I was planning on having a passel of kids. Can you imagine me in overalls feeding chickens? I'm sure you could handle yourself on a farm. The truth is, I could. Bartending hasn't worked out so bad. Customers talk so much, I don't have time to think of my own troubles. Which are? 
My most recent setback was running into your help at the restaurant. <laughs> what if I put some potatoes in first? Sounds fine by me. Potatoes will take a while to bake. I'm in no hurry. Michael! Michael! Keep the change. Thank you, ma'am. Good night. Good night. Michael! Sloan Industries. This is Ruth Sloan. To whom am I speaking? This is Caroline Haley, Mrs. Sloan. Oh, Mrs. Haley, hello. You're working late. Just catching up. Is Mr. Sloan in his office? No, he's not. Did he leave me a message saying where he is? No, ma'am. Do you have any idea where he might be? And the Chicago Housing Authority, all caps, has decided not to prosecute veterans who have taken up residence as squatters, in quotes, in 50 separate residences, period. New article. Here. Thanks a million. George, this is Ginger, who's going to substitute for me tonight. I have to babysit my mother. I've explained the procedure. Oh, thanks. Bye. Hi, George. Hi. If I sound familiar to you, it's because I'm the Lemon Tomato Juice Girl. On the, on the radio? I don't have time to listen to the radio. Uh, start with the Dear Pauline column. Read all punctuation. Oh, I just love Dear Pauline, don't you? <laughs> uh, dear, capital D, Pauline, capital P, comma. I'm a single gal who had dinner, comma, nothing else, comma, with a married man, comma. And you'd think I was a criminal the way my friends treat me, period. What can I do about it? Question mark. Sign, capital S, comma, live, capital L, and let, capital L, live, capital L, period. Well, she should have signed herself homewrecker, capital H. What? Live and let live is a homewrecker. Just read the copy, please. Dear, capital D, live, capital L, comma, watch out, period. By having dinner with a married man, your, apostrophe, R-E, only getting your just desserts, dash, and I don't mean the sweet kind, period. Pauline agrees with me. I'm home. Mom? Here. Al? In here. Oh, Mother, what happened? The baby is fine. Al what? has him. Al took him out for a walk. He's fine. I'll get your chair. I was making the cranberry sauce and cornbread for, for supper. And I had the pan out and mixing ball and milk and cornmeal and everything. But the baking powder was too high up in the pantry. And I grabbed onto the, to the shelf and I lifted myself up. And, and, and the chair rolled out shh, from under me. Shh, 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 shh. Hold on. Are you hurt? I'm fine. Okay. Don't tell Al what happened or, or Jeff or, or anyone. All right. Okay. Do you want a cloth for your face? I'll get it. I'll get it, Mother. Heavens. Don't talk to me in that tone, young lady. I scrimped and saved and worked my fingers to the bone to raise you children by myself. We know that. We want to return the favor. I don't want to be a burden. I never wanted to be a burden. Mother, the burden we have is knowing how much you resent anyone who tries to help you. Potatoes are almost done. You light the broiler, I'll salt the steaks. You salt your steaks before you cook? I always have. I never have. I won't salt yours, then. You do whatever you like. I'd like another beer. Coming right up.
We're all out. No, they're back here. Why do people do things they know they shouldn't do? It's a question for the ages. Give me the brush off. Get it? He sounds familiar. I smell food cooking. Potatoes. Am I right? I've got scouring brushes to clean those pots and pans up after supper. I'll come back next week. Show you the fine line of products made by the Fuller Brush Company. I lost my appetite. That's understandable. I hope you're not offended. I told you I'd know when it was time to say goodbye. I knew it was time, but I... I just couldn't bring myself to say it. I should have. I'm not a homewrecker, Mike. And you're too good to be anyone's mistress. Maybe we'll see each other at the stadium next spring. Maybe. The Indians have a shot at the pennant. Yes, they do. Does anybody want more potatoes? Is that what these are? Don't get something to eat after she goes to sleep. Who wants more stew tomatoes? Nobody's eating anything. We're not hungry. You don't like my cooking. No, ordinarily we do. I did my best. Don't ride her out. Shh. I'm not riding her. Nothing tastes the way it usually does. I did my best. There's no sugar in the tomatoes. I couldn't reach it. Why didn't you ask for help? I don't want to be a burden. I am so sick and tired of hearing that. Now, what you really don't want to do is ask for help. Because you're too proud. Which, as I recall, is one of the very big sins in your church. Don't talk to me that way after what's happened to me. What's happened to you? You're having trouble moving around, but uh, nothing's changed up here. You were just as proud before the polio as you are now. You're always too proud to ask for help. Why can't you do that? I've never had to. If you don't ask for a favor, you don't know one? Is that no. it? No! Well, if you don't swallow a little of that pride now, when things are a little more difficult for you, and ask for help, then someone else is going to have to do the cooking around here, because we can't eat this stuff. Ask for help, Ann. In the beginning, it'll be difficult for you, I know. The second time, it'll get easier, and by the third time, you'll realize that by asking for help, you're actually giving your family a gift. By letting them make a contribution. People like making a contribution, in.
son of a... Make that hungry, son of a... If you made her cry... If I made her cry, what? She hasn't made me cry with her stubbornness. Pass the damn tomatoes. I wondered why the lights were still on. Mrs. Haley, you're certainly working late. Trying to get a leg up on things. Well, I admire that sort of perseverance. But perhaps now you'd better call it a day. Certainly, sir. Your wife called to tell you she's returned from her trip. She's at home? Yes, sir. And you have my condolences at the death of your Uncle Oscar. Uh, thank you. I guess I'll run along, too, so she doesn't worry. She's not worried. I told you you were having dinner. You told her what? I told you you were working late and that you just stepped out for a bite to eat. But I wasn't... Why on earth would you say such a thing? Because I assumed you wanted to keep your whereabouts a secret from her. Why would you assume that? <laughs> when a man is doing something he doesn't want his wife to know about, it's not my place to inform her. What an incredibly presumptuous thing to say. I apologize if it was too presumptuous, but I also assumed you were out buying a gift for your wife and I didn't want to spoil the surprise. Good night, sir. Good night, Mrs. Haley. Oh, sir, Miss Watkins said she believed there was no money in the budget for clerical overtime. I know I'm being presumptuous again for asking, but is that still the case? I'll review the budget. Coming, Mom. For Pete's sakes, would you not push me, please? Oh, would you hurry? Mom? Hurry. Right. Mom? Sam? Mom? What's the matter? Are you okay? I would like someone to squeeze me a glass of orange juice. And I would love a soft-boiled egg. You like the yolk runny. And I didn't get to finish this morning's paper. Could someone bring it, please? Coming right up, Miss Kay. And if anyone will help me with a hot bath, I would gladly pay them ten... I would thank them from the bottom of my heart. Mm. My stomach is still sour. I believe it was that last coconut cream pie was spoiled. They let it sit out to cool it too long. Mm -mm. It wasn't the pie that set my stomach churning. Maybe it was a muffin. Abel Davis, you know very well what I am talking about. Now, you have been driving and polishing and servicing that big packet for six years, so don't pretend you didn't see it when he drove it past Pedagos. Well, maybe the woman was a friend of the family. Next, you'll be saying she was his niece. Maybe she was, and it's not our place to mention it. Oh! I am not going to walk in there and say, Good morning, Mrs. Sloan. Your husband is running around with a woman young enough to be his daughter. <laughs> now, God knows I only have the love in my heart for Ruth Sloan that he requires me to have, and not one iota more. But with that man running around behind her back, I never thought that I would hear myself say this. But I feel sorry for Ruth Sloan. Good morning, Mrs. Sloan. Good morning, Gloria. Morning, Gloria. It's good to have you back, Mrs. Sloan. Why, thank you. Do we have any more of those little cinnamon rolls left? We're out. Oh? I thought I saw some in the kitchen. Never mind. So, uh, what prompted you to return early? 
Aunt Lorreen was impossible to live with after she discovered Uncle Oscar had been having an affair. Oh, oh excuse me. No harm done. The thing that stuck in Lorene's craw, that was the way she put it, was that she found out too late to do anything about it. She found out at the wake. <clears throat> Who can blame the poor woman if she'd known while he was still alive that Oscar was carrying on behind her back, she at least could have had the satisfaction of emptying their bank account and divorcing him. Uh, would you like me to warm up your coffee, Mr. Sloan? No, thanks. I've had enough. Dear Pauline, I read the letter from Crazy in Love. Like her, I fell for a married man, but we were able to call it quits before anything happened. I looked at myself in the mirror today and, for the first time in months, didn't hate what I saw. Sign me, no longer crazy.